Thank you, Chairman. I don't want to go into too much detail at the moment. Um, I think a lot of the changes here are, as the Chairman says, are language changes where, where it doesn't quite make sense. And there are certain um, changes in legislation which have implemented in the new constitution. One of the key changes, which I think I'll cover when we get to that, is about the um, delegation section, where what we've done, we've effectively um, turned the current delegation system on its head, if you like, because at the moment what happens is there are matters delegated to a committee and then they then detail all the matters delegated to officers. And the problem we have with that is, is that laws change or are amended or new laws come in and sometimes there are gaps in those delegations. So that, so what, what, how it's changed now, the more modern approach to doing that, given the, the dynamic area of local government law, is to actually look at each law and say what powers are going to be reserved to either the committee, to cabinet, or to a portfolio holder. And once you know what powers are reserved there, the balance then is left for officers. And that avoids a situation which you regularly come across where we find generally a minor issue in the legislation wasn't delegated to the committee, wasn't that or, or to cabinet or to a, a cabinet member, but nor was it specifically delegated elsewhere either. So that then mops up that. So I think you turn it on your head, you say, what are the really important decisions that we want the committee or the executive to do? And then generally the operational matters are then left to the officers. And then that avoids having, as in the current constitution, swathes of paperwork setting out different legislation and its provisions, some of which is, is out of date and not relevant. So that's, that's the key, key change, I think, in terms of um, philosophy. But it just means that we, well, when you're actually looking for a delegation, particularly as an officer or a member, you said, all you have to do, do is decide is, is that power or is that authority reserved to the committee or to the cabinet or the portfolio holder? Because if it's not, then it's delegated to an officer. And that means that when a new legislation, legislation comes out, we'll review that and go through that same process and say which of that should be reserved to a committee or cabinet or, or portfolio holder. And then the balance in terms of operation and operation of that law will be, de will be delegated to officers. So there's clarity on that. It may mean, and all, all the delegations go to the director in the current system in this process, and then the director has authority in the constitution to subdelegate to his staff. So at some point, I would expect the director to have their own scheme of delegation to say, um, unless power is delegated directly to the director, that he might want his managers to operate those functions. So, for example, I imagine that um, you know, licensing matters will probably go to the licensing managers rather than by the, the director of community services. So, that's really the change in philosophy. And I believe, Chairman, I've got nothing else to add at the moment. And I can go through that again when we get into that section, if you'd like. Councillor Johnson. Thank you. Um, obviously, I understand this. What is really important within the council and the role of councillors is that if there are any changes or even operational matters, that actually the leader, his cabinet, the relevant cabinet member is informed because there have been times in this council, or even as a leader, with my eyes wide open, things happen that you don't always know about. So that would be a courtesy as much as anything else. Can that be written in anywhere that this should absolutely happen? Um, in terms of executive functions, that's a matter for the leader of the council to determine how he wants to exercise those functions. So while those delegations are in here for the sake of completeness, actually neither this committee nor council has any power to change those um, the executive seat of the delegations. That's down to him or her alone to do that. So they're here for completeness, but that's the matter for the um, for the leaders to determine whether they want, want that to happen or not. Can I also clarify, I did forgot to, forget to mention, that whilst I've changed the philosophy of the delegations, the actual level of delegation hasn't changed. We haven't delegated more to officers than we did before. It's simply written in a different way, that's all. Thank you. 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 Th